Yeah, you know, I thought um, I really was, was proud of the way that we started the game. I thought we played with great energy to come out. Uh, we established a paint presence right away, uh, which was important to us, and got off to a good start 11-2. Um, so we were doing some good things early. I thought we really battled them in the first half. Uh, so I was really pleased and proud of how we played. You know, there was probably about a six-minute stretch where, where we struggled. Uh, we struggled on offense, and then we also weren't you know, connected to, to get the stops, get the defensive rebounds that we needed. So um, again, we're, we're playing better basketball over longer periods of time. It's a matter of us going from 20 good minutes to 25 to you know, 32 or 34, whatever it was today. And again, you want to beat a good team. Radford is a good team. Obviously, they you know, were close with Notre Dame, went right down to the wire, close with Marquette. Uh, so we know they're a really talented team. We knew we, we just have to string together 40 good minutes of basketball. Questions for the players? Matt Torrance, did you think maybe in the first half, offense seemed to kind of let you guys down at times. Maybe you could have gotten a little better, better lead on them and things have gone a little smoother. I think uh, we got open shots. Uh, we just got to hit them next game. Uh, like Coach said, we started off with that 11-2 to two run. I think now it's just figuring out how we keep doing that, keep it, keep it going and not go through spurts and segments where we can't score the ball. And then, Sam, you got established pretty fast in the game, the first four points of the game, and then career high today in points. Um, just how did they get you going here? I think it's uh, credit to my teammates. They were finding me in the right spots and, you know, um, I was getting my touches, and they also had uh, great movement off the ball as well, which was getting me open. Uh, but credit to my teammates for all that work. And how does it feel to be such a big part of the offense now and getting more playing time going into the starting role here? Uh, I think it feels good, but um, I think we just need to come out uh, and get a win, you know what I mean, and uh, keep working really hard. And I think we have the right keys to, uh, to be a great team. Uh, but like we like we said, we just got to um, figure it out on offense and put together a full 40 minutes, and I think we'll be good. And how do you think you personally can help bring that way? I think I, uh, myself, got to keep rebounding. And, um, you know, I got to also find my teammates in the right spots. And like I said, I think we'll be great. And Torres, was that a part of it? Just maybe breaking through here in one of these games and getting that win? Yeah, I think that'll be a big thing for us and our confidence. Uh, like the guys in the, we got good guys in our locker room. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to be better. But it's just a matter of putting it together in one game. Like Coach said earlier, we've been putting it together for 20 minutes, then 30 minutes, 32 minutes, 34 minutes. But it's just a matter of us putting it together for 40 minutes. But I know that every guy in the locker room wants to win, and we want to get that first win. And I honestly feel like getting that first win would like help us recognize how good we can be and how good that we are. And then just how has Coach, either for either of you, how has Coach kind of helped you all develop this year, um, coming in this year? I think for us, just, just constantly getting better. I, I think I know one thing that we're focusing on right now is taking a step forward every single day, not taking two, uh, one step forward and two steps back. That's been a main thing for us, is just trying to get better every single day. And I think that everybody on the coaching staff encourages us. And I think that's a big thing because uh, it's tough right now. We got a new team, new coaching staff. Uh, didn't win many games last year, not winning games now. But I think everybody on the team is like just grateful to be able to wake up and play basketball every day. And then plus the coaches encouraging us and just giving us more confidence to get that win and get get this thing going. And then, George, you talked about last year. What kind of helped make your decision to come back this season? Uh, I couldn't go nowhere else, but. <laughs> <laughs> But I think just uh, just Coach Taylor, just the coaching staff, and then uh, just my friends here. Uh, Jaden Michael's one of my best friends. He's from Burlington. I live with him. Just the relationship that I've built with people here. Uh, KCI academic advisor. I love the school. Sam, another returning guy. But I think the returning guys here just made a pact that, you know, like, we love each other off the court. Uh, let's do the same on the court, stay together, and let's, let's be better. And Sam, same for you. How's Coach Taylor helped you, and then what made you decide to come back? Um, I thought he had a plan for us, and he really trusts us uh, in everything that we do, uh, in our abilities on the on court, and he loves us as people off the court. And I think that's huge to have that chemistry with a with a player and uh, and a coach. So I think that's great. And then after losses like this, what's the value he's trying to preach to y'all in the locker room after each game? I think uh, similar to what Torrance said, uh, we got to take um, instead of taking one step forward, two steps back. We just got to keep working, keep uh, keep staying in the gym, keep staying locked in, 
and um, giving it our all out on the court and staying consistent and executing. And I think we can do that, and we have the right tools to do that. And then, like Torrance said, with the new team, new coaches, it brings some struggles, as we can see. But how can you all go further in this season to improve those? I think we've, if we just trust the process, keep working hard, like I said, staying in the gym, uh, trusting our team, my teammates, and trusting coaches' plan for us. And uh, I think we're going to figure it out for sure. Is there a sense that you're getting close to that breakthrough? I mean, you've had some games look like you were close, and other mm -hmm. games maybe not so close. I mean, where does it, how do you see that? Yeah, I think it's yeah, – unfortunately, it's all part of the process. And, and I appreciate the maturity of these guys, whether it's sitting up here, the guys in the locker room, uh, understanding that, you know, it just takes time. And, you know, we, we saw, you know, a long period of time against NC State where we played really good basketball against a high-level you know, opponent. Uh, Jacksonville State, who I think is going to be really good in the OVC, you know, we, we come out, we play a really good first half against them. Uh, today was another strong first half showing. So we're seeing progress, and, and we're seeing a lot of positives. We just got to continue to, to figure out, okay, hey, if there's a – and there's always going to be a you know, tough stretch, teams that make a run on you, 6-0 run, 8-0 run, whatever. So it's how do we limit those runs, and what's our response to the run? You know, I think to start the second half, they came out of the locker room and made a little bit of a run on us, and then we came back with a 7-2 run. So, um, you know, basically our response to, you know, some, some conflict, some adversity uh, is what's important. And it seems like you all started games pretty well, you stay in it, and then it kind of just kind of falls apart in the second half. How can you combat those issues? Well, it's like I just said. I mean, it's, it doesn't necessarily fall apart, but it's just that stretch of, you know, like six minutes, you know. You really, if you look at the game outside of that six minutes, it was pretty much even. Um, they just made back-to-back -back runs that got us down in a 15-point hole, and now we're trying to scramble and come back from it. So trying to, to limit those runs is, is what we're trying to do. And then I have some other questions. Um, what are you kind of preaching to the team? Do you have pillars for how you want to fix this team, how you want to change the scenario for the team? Yeah, you know, we're, we're trying to establish a culture around the program, um, and it's not really fixing them, you know, per se. Uh, you know, no one, no one needs, no one needs to be fixed. Um, you know, we just try to instill our values and, and lay a foundation that we believe will be uh, successful for our guys. And you know, so we have our values that we talk about. Um, you know, we have behaviors and beliefs that that we stress to our guys, and we have good guys, and, and they're they're doing their best. Uh, they're good people off the court, on the court, so. Um, you know, we're making progress in that area. And is there any, like, certain word that, like, that's your core value? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have some words that, that, we, that we talk about, you know, being selfless, being accountable, uh, loving each other, and, and being tough. Uh, so that those are kind of our four our values that we talk about quite a bit, and uh, we define that out for our guys so they know exactly what that means. And then just personally, how is it adjusting to – being the head coach at Elon and just going through these losses? Uh, well, nobody likes to lose. Um, uh, so we're, we're out there competing and trying to win, and we're playing good teams. So, um, you know, uh, thankfully I've been a head coach before. I've, I've been through um, the development of programs. It takes time. Um, while I wish there was a magic wand, it just, it just takes time to build a program. You know, it's, it's through recruitment and coaching and development. So it's just all part of the journey, and, and it's a tough part right now. Um, but thankfully, we, you know, we have support administratively, have support you know, from the fans that are showing up, and I know more will show up as we continue to put a good product on the floor. So um, we're just working to, to, to build towards it. And then back to the game. So Max McKinnon, he's playing um, gaining a lot more starts and playing a lot more high level. Um, what's he meant to you? Oh, yeah, Max has been huge. Um, he's had a huge impact on our team. Uh, he's a guy that can touch the paint with the basketball, so whether it's dribble drives or post-ups, uh, he's not afraid of contact. He can go and finish. Uh, he gives us another ball handler that can make plays and make decisions. Um, so re and really, a lot of it for Max has just been learning the American game. The game is very different here than it's played internationally in different countries. And for Max specifically from Australia, the game is just different. So every time he steps on the floor, there's a, a huge learning curve in terms of how teams are playing and style of play, physicality, kind of intensity, emotion, whatever. 
Um, so he's learning all that right now, but he's given us a lot of good things on the floor, and, and I know he's going to continue to get better for us. And then just beyond just this game and this season, how can he help you to kind of establish what you want to do? Yeah, no, he's just got to continue to work and, and get better and not be satisfied with the playing time, but you know, how does he become more efficient, more productive? How does he have more of an impact on the game, put more of an imprint on the game? Which again, he's seeing other teams do that, and he's seeing other guards do that. So it's just a matter of him learning and, and going through this this process. And then DeAndre Smart out with the ACL tear. How does that loss kind of affect you all this season? Yeah, that's huge. I mean, obviously Dre was double figure scorer and was you know leading rebounder. So you take a guy like that out of the lineup, um, but it provides another opportunity. So Sam Sherry stepped up and gets thirteen and seven in his ab- in his absence and. You know, we got Andrew Junkin and John Bowen, so we got other big guys that will step up and, and give us some support. But uh, it's a big loss for us. And, and, you know, in a season where we're a little bit shorthanded anyway, to lose somebody like that that was really having a meaningful freshman, you know, impact was tough. But he'll, he'll bounce back, he'll recover, and we'll get him back hopefully next year. A couple of questions. You've got a couple of games against some of these neighborhood rivals mm-hmm. mm-hmm. coming up. What do you, what's your kind of outlook on that just yeah. in general playing these teams? Yeah, no, I love it. I love the opportunity to play against, you know, especially, you know, guys that are doing it the right way, good programs. Uh, So to play NC State and Radford and, you know, UNCG and High Point, uh, that means a lot. I think it means a lot to our fan base as we continue to build the program. So it's exciting to play against some of these programs here locally, and um, hopefully we'll be able to establish ourselves as someone who's really formidable to play against. I did at Belmont Abbey. Uh, it was an exhibition game for us. Uh, we, we, we did once go over to the Coliseum. Any other final questions? Thanks, Thank you, guys.